all right uh, well, welcome back uh, and um to this is a moment in the word of god and this will be the fourth video in relation to this uh, uh recording and this will be the main uh, the main bible meditation and um, that will be taken from the book of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 2. And uh, we'll read from um, the first verse to the last verse. Um, it's quite a long chapter, though. So if I cannot, uh, let me see. All right. I'll read up to where I, uh, the, the chapter, the area that is related to my discussion because I can remember that I mentioned it in uh, my previous video also when I, the long lengthy one that is over one hour, the recording I did about um, the spirit of Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of God. And uh, to remember that I promise that I will talk at length about it in um, my Bible, in the Bible meditation on Fri for Friday, which is yesterday. But well, I couldn't do that. Well, yeah, that promise I'm going to fulfill it today by the special grace of God. And I read from the first verse, uh, the book of Acts, chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I mentioned before the desire of our Father in heaven, Trinity God, God the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, that if desire that we, children of God, should be in one accord, in unity. And the Bible spoke about that as well, in confirmation to the mind of God. The way in the Zion, the way in the Zion for every children of God to be, to relate. He wants us to relay in one heart, one mind, in unity of love. Unfortunately, it's not so. If we have to be honest to one another, it's not so. It's rare to see that happening in the midst of the children of God. We have people with that like-minded of Christ and uh, in accordance and obedience to the Word of God as He has mandated and co commanded us to be in one unity of love and accord and everything to serve Him selflessly. We have people like that in the church of God, in the midst of the church of God, outside of God. But unfortunately, it's not everyone. And as a result of that, that is the genesis of uh, struggle, you know? Uh, the genesis of uh, kind of a mini storm in the midst of the house of God, church of God, and everything. I've said it before, uh, it's not everyone that comes to the house of God, church of God, that comes there to worship. Some are there because they are on a mission. And the Bible, the Word of God, already prepared our mind also in times, of, to, in times to all of those things. And that's why he said that it's not everyone that calls him Lord, Lord that are going to enter into the kingdom of God. It's not everyone that call him Lord, Lord, that are truly serving him in righteousness, in truth, 
and in honesty. Based on experience and people that I know, that they belong to churches, they are members of the household of God, and they carry the name of the, the church denomination. People close to me that I know, it's not that someone told me or they say they say a story from other people. This is live and direct experience I've had with many people. They talk about their Christianity, that, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm of this denomination, I'm of that denomination. denomination. But in the true sense, they serve God by mouth. You see them going into the art and the things that God commanded us not to go into by serving other God. They only go to church as in based on religious act alone. They serve by mouth, but their heart is far away from God. They engage in diabolical wickedness and practice that God spoke against. I have seen and I know over the years people like that that when you look at the level of their wickedness you will not believe that they are actually Christian like they say they have. They call themselves Christian. <clears throat> But the wickedness that is in them, their behavior, the, the cruelty in them, their action speaks otherwise. And they actually practice the things that God said we should not engage in by going into diabolical wickedness. I know people like that. And I have seen people that are actually holding the position, pastoral position in the house of the God, that are into stealing and robbery. And yet, they are pastors in the church of God. I have had the live and direct encounter and experience of that. And I have to quickly remind that person that. Do you remember that you are a pastor in the church of God, outside of God? One of uh, a member of staff that works with my husband. And I was like, you're a pastor. you pastor a church. And because I was disappointed. I said, then I'm not even into ministerial. Right from my childhood, God has been using me. But I'm not fully into the ministerial thing I'm doing now. But then I grow up. I was born in Christ. I grow up in Christ. Then out of disappointment in my heart, I was like, but you are a pastor. You pastor a church. How can you deal fraudulently? How can you rob and steal? And the person was quiet. He couldn't say anything. Because he knows that he's against Everything is stand for as a Christian, as a pastor, the head of church. And that is why the word of God warned us against uh, robbery and everything. We all love money, even myself. I think I love money. <laughs> I love money. Everyone loves money. Everyone needs money. Everyone wants to be comfortable, to be rich, to have money, to do what you have desires. I'm not going to dispute that. Even God knows. And that's why he said we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added, will be added unto us. Before he quote that Bible verse, he compared the wealth of the world to the people of the world. And use it as an example to all that it calls. Now all those things that people are striving and committing sin to gather, I will give it to you. All I want from you is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things, everything, because he owns it all. 
the riches of the world in heaven and earth, underneath, in the oceans, everything belongs to God. He said, I will hide it unto you. So, his word is yea and amen. His word is faithful. When people look at children of God sometimes, when you tell them you are struggling, they won't believe you. Why? Even people close to you sometimes when you say, Oh, I'm in need, they won't believe you. Why? Because of the glory of God in your life. And God knows that because of that, the one that he will use to help you, he will put it in their hearts to help you. It is one thing for God to put it in the heart of people to help you. It's another thing for them to be obedient to the commandment and the will of God. So it's two different things, yeah. And I will categorically mention this before I continue with the Bible reading. That when you're talking about wealth, there are two kinds of wealth. There is spiritual wealth. And there is physical wealth. I'm on Bible meditation already here. So, <laughs> there is spiritual wealth and physical wealth. Physical wealth, without spiritual wealth, is nothing before God. The only thing is that physical wealth, that person will enjoy physical wealth on her. But it will be richer and poor spiritually. Then the danger of physical wealth, if you are not a child of God that, uh, that is God-fearing, that knows and has the fear of God in you, that knows His will, His commandment, and His statute, that has the fear of God in you, the danger of physical wealth is that it can lead to a fall of mind. That's why... My mic disconnected. My mind connected. And this is the reason why you, the, the word used to say like money, some people say, you know, from over time, they say money is the root of all evil. To some extent, they are right. I was talking about something in the movie we watched, Breaking Bad. That's a typical example of what that proverb is about, that money is the root of all evil. For people that does not know the will and commandment of God, or should I say, because some do know, but they don't have the fear of God, they still go into what is against the will and commandment of God. This includes when you give, don't ask back that God should give you back what you have given him. If you say God should give you back what you have given the household of God or the church of God or the servant of God, have you ever thought, if God says, give me my hair that you breathe, give me my spirit in you, give me the sound health I have given you, give me the wealth that you are enjoying, have we thought about that? So, because of the temptation attached to it, that's why some people say money is the root of all evil for people that does not know God. Or that are not in obedience to the will and commandment of God. Because money is good. Money gives you the opportunity to have good things of life. As long as the money that comes from God that you have, or God uses other people to bless you. Whichever way, God blesses you with that money. As long as you use it to serve God, you are on the right track. You use it to help the needy. You are on the right track. As long as the money you have, you don't glorify yourself or ability, or should I say capacity, to acquire that wealth, but you glorify God with that money in service to Him. You are on the right track. This is what I want us to remember. Spiritual wealth is that 
Sometimes, I thought of God, the people have this slang that, oh, they are as poor as church rat. Some will hypocritical way or hypocritically say, let his God come and give him or her wealth or give him or her money or put food on his or her table because they have the mindset or determination to make your life hell or miserable. But who are we, mankind, that we will stand before our creator and boast and even issue trade? Between twinkle of an eye, it can, we can be here, the next thing we are gone. Because it's the one that's got the power of resurrection and life in it. It's the one that has the power to kill. It's the one that has the power to command life into anyone. And you are a living creature. This is what I want to know. So spiritual wealth is of paramount importance for every children of God. That's why it said in the Bible that we should gather our wealth in heaven. Where most will not eat it away. The borrower will not steal it or rob it of us. The wealth we gather in heaven is what determines our reward, our crown, our place on that day. And the bonus and good thing about spiritual wealth is that right from the spiritual realm, it impacts your life in the physical realm positively as well. You might not be extremely wealthy, you might not be rich, you might even be struggling. But because your faithfulness in service to God and your spiritual wealth that you have acquired in your service before God and your giving, offering and everything, just name it, charity work generally. I will zero all of it on the charity work generally. Because of this, Doors open in the physical. When you are in dear need of help, that help comes one way or the other. God uses people to help you one way or the other. It does not matter if that person is a believer or not. It does not matter if that person is a Christian or not. People use it. People that are not even, that does not even know God. To help his children. The same way he uses people that knows him. Because he holds it all. He created us all. May God help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. I will try as much as possible to read this Bible chapter to the, uh, let's say, the chapter I can read it up to before the, uh, the recording will lapse again. Then I'll break it down afterwards. So I'll continue with my reading. And suddenly, the word of God said in the first verse, like Jesus Christ said to them, go and wait, I'm gonna send you a helper. That he is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the helper that help all children of God. Every gift we have comes from the Spirit of God. I want us to know that. And that is why in the word of God, the Bible said that we should not at any time grieve the Spirit of God. In the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4, 30. That we should not at any time grieve the Spirit of God. Because according to the Bible, every sin is forgivable. Any sin that you sin against Jesus Christ to even God the Father is forgivable, but the one who is sin against the Spirit of God is unforgivable. And that person stands the chance of domination, eternal domination. So we need to be careful. People 
come and say, oh, we have vision, we have this, we have prophecy and everything. Some are evil Christian, they don't want to hear of prophecy. I don't know. I don't know how you can be a Christian and you don't want to hear anything that has truth or that is in relation to manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But that is the way it, in reality some people don't even want to hear it. But the Spirit of God, according to the Bible and our Lord Jesus Christ, is for guiding to guide us to reveal all things to us. Is a communicator between us and our Father, God the Father's Son, Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the communicator between the Father and Son to us. To relate to us the mind of God. To reveal things to us. To show us things. Depending on individual gift of in, that is as given to individual person. All sins are forgiven when we sin against the Father and the Son. But sin against Holy Ghost. It's unforgivable. And the person stands.